biggest, probably the biggest change we've seen in the economy in our shared lifetimes is the role of women and the presence of women in the workforce. How are women changing the, fa the face of our workforce and the type of work that we think of as driving our world economy? And where do you see potential for change through global organizing of, of women in, in labor? For too long, women's contributions been ignored and frankly as a formal labour movement until the last few years we haven't paid enough attention to both the dignity and respect that we ought to pay to women working in the informal sector as well as working in the formal sector but also to the economic threats of allowing jobs to become increasingly part of the informal sector and that that sector with no rules desperation an absolute sector of desperation of the economy actually has a dominant female face. It's women and young people, mostly migrants, but uh, increasingly young people everywhere. And if we could formalise those jobs, if we could see women in the workplace in equal numbers to those of men, remember women hold up half the sky, but in fact 80% of, uh, um, of, of men are in uh, the workforce, whereas only 30% of women are. So if you could equalise those numbers, and that means jobs in the supportive structures like childcare, like health, like uh, education, but it also means productivity gains of amazing uh, potential. If you equalise the numbers uh, in France, you would get 4% increase in GDP. In Japan, 8%. In Egypt, a whopping 34%. Now we're talking about global recovery. We say three things are necessary for global recovery. Investment, investment, investment. Investment in infrastructure, particularly enabling green infrastructure. That's the biggest multiplier effect in the medium term. But investment in the care economy. Those things that actually support people, support uh, women being able to participate, but also our jobs that are dominated by women. Again, massive numbers of jobs. And, uh, and of course, fundamental social protection minimum wages and collective bargaining, the income distribution tools that actually will help lift demand and give people confidence to participate in their economies. You do those things, we get rid of the racketeers, the casino capitalists, and you actually have a chance of building an alternate model for the global economy, one that is based on shared prosperity, and that requires an alternate, lev an alternate model of investment and new investment in social policy. The AFL-CIO this year at their convention gave a very special award to a group of domestic workers. Do you want to talk a bit about them? Well, their uh, domestic workers are just wonderful, can I tell you. They're strong, they're feisty, and uh, they've fought now for 10 years. We finally got a commitment to a convention at the ILO. Why do you need a convention just for domestic workers, people say? Because in every industrial standard, then there were exemptions and domestic workers were exempt from labour laws. Seems criminal, but that was the truth. So we got a convention, saw them included in international standards. We've now, through the ITC's 12 by 12 campaign, we've seen 12 countries ratify that convention and about a dozen more saying they'll do so in the next 12 months. And you saw it, the domestic workers organising themselves. Fantastic. So we're very proud of them. But can I tell you, that's replicated in yeah. the street vendors, in the waste pickers, in the marginalised agricultural workers, in informal sector construction work. You come to a number of countries, India, parts of Africa, parts of Latin America, and we are again rebuilding the cooperatives, again rebuilding unions. But it takes a different mindset from the global labour movement and from national labour movements. And I'm proud to say we're getting there. Yeah, the labour movement is very different from the labour movement you're, I think it was your great-grandfather was part of? It's true, it's true. My great-great-grandfather actually was part of the original strike that led to the labour movement in Australia. So I grew up with labour stories. But uh, the, the work today, is, work today is complex. So of course we want our strong, in, strong industrial structures and we'll fight for those and we need to strengthen them. And the crazy labour laws in America that just allow corporations to bully workers out of joining their union, that has to change. But we'll also find ways to organise workers, to help organise work 
in all sectors of the economy, including the informal economy, and we'll have a standards discussion on formalising work in the informal economy, because we have managed to convince some employers it's actually not in their interest. Not your American employers necessarily, but some employers. We've got some work to so do. So we'll see. ITUC General Secretary Sharon Barrow, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you.